Hey guys, uh, Michael Waterhouse here. Um, I'm going to make myself a little drink. I have a smoke and I'm going to give you a tour of my cocktail collection. Uh, 25 years ago, I picked up this one little cocktail shaker at a yard sale in upstate New York. And uh, you'll see what happened after that. So we're going to make a drink first. I'm going to make a Manhattan in one of my shakers using these uh, antique de decanters. First of all, what I'm going to do is open up this shaker. It's an antique shaker. Oops, the ring came out. That's a cork ring to uh, stop spillage. We'll put that back in as we go on. I'm going to start with um, some ice. This is, um, I'll move that so you can see this. This is a piece, 1940s, made by Glow Hill. It's a Canadian company that has all the bar tools you need for your home bar. Uh, Bakelite and Chrome. So first we're going to get our tongs and we're going to take an ice cube out of another antique. This is a uh, ice bucket and here we go. It's a big ice cube. We've got to stir a drink. It's not really going to work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to crack it. I'm going to crack the ice with this. It's a nice crack. See the spring in it? This is probably circa 1950s. It's messy. All right. So we broke the broke the ice up a little bit. I'm going to return the uh, top. Where's my ring? There it is. To the shaker. And this is not just a shaker. It's more of a stirrer, which is uh, really not as commonplace. But Manhattan's martinis, anything that's made without uh, juice or milk is generally stirred. So there we go, we got that. So we're going to open this up, take that back off and start our drink. Here we have some decanters. These decanters are uh, 1940s. You may not be able to see it, but this is bourbon. That says vermouth. On top is a uh, jigger. Uh, I'm not going to use these, but you could easily use these for making your drink. Full one would be a, a full jigger, which is an ounce and a half. Half a jigger if you went halfway. So with Manhattan, you kind of go two to one. But I'm going to use these jiggers, two fingers, a uh, common term back in the day when you get a whiskey, it's off a finger of whiskey, off two fingers of whiskey. So these are measures of uh, two ounces, one ounce, and we're going to start our drink. Two ounces of bourbon, two fingers of bourbon, and vermouth, one finger. One finger of vermouth. And let's see that down there. And then we're gonna add some bitters. Here I have a beautiful antique uh, bitters bottle with silver overlay. I'm not gonna use that one, but it's a, a beautiful piece, 1930s also. Uh, this one's a little more modern, so I'm gonna add a little bitters. Put our top back on. There we go. And I'm going to stir it. You see, I'm stirring it by pushing this down. Back and forth, back and forth. I'm going to stir about, you know, 10 seconds. Just make it nice and chill. That's about ready. And then I'm going to get some garnish. This is a garnish tray from the 1970s. Pretty funky and cool. You don't have to touch the fruit. You can take your toothpicks out. Bam. And I'm going to pour our drink. There you go. Now, because smoking and drinking were very commonplace, especially in the 30s and 40s, I'm going to have a cigarette. This is a cigarette holder. And this beautiful young lady will light my cigarette. See her lips get red, is that? So, here's the 1940s. And now, we'll start our tour. Alright, so, um, what, I'm, what I want to celebrate is... Uh, 
I would say like 1946. Um, the depression was over. Uh, Prohibition was repealed in uh, 33, and World War II ended in 1945. And it's when the Picard, the real party began. Um, America got super creative after repeal and created some of the coolest barware, as you see here, very simple things, two fingers of whiskey, decanters with their own jiggers, ice buckets that were easy, you don't have to top, put the top down and pick it up. Some of them even had um, their tongs right in the top of the, of the, um, the bucket. Uh, bitters bottles. All these things were meant for home entertaining. After 1945, the cocktail party began. People moved to suburbs, and, and drink became fun. Life became fun, because finally people had money in their pockets. The war was over, the depression was gone, uh, prohibition was repealed, we got the right to drink back again, and, and America took that right, and kind of went crazy with it, with these great, great bar items that I'm going to show you. Again here, not American, it's Canadian, but you know they are our neighbors, and it's beautiful. Bakelite was the plastic of the of the 40s, 50s, 60s. Um, this is Bakelite as well. It's a, a beautiful piece. Looks like a bottle when it's lined up properly. Get that right. Uh, looks like a bottle of whiskey. You open it up. You got cigarettes. You need a light. You got a light. This really has nothing to do with uh, with drink, but it does in the sense that. Um, people smoke and drink and to have that sitting on your bar was quite a spectacular thing. So <clears throat> now I'm going to give you the tour of the collection. Okay, so Prohibition was repealed in 1933, December 5th, 1933. Over here, which you can't see, I have um, five or six original newspapers, San Francisco Chronicle, uh, the Herald Tribu Tribune, I think, a couple of ones that are December 6, 1933, because news didn't move nearly as fast as it does now. Uh, Prohibition repeal, titles of newspapers. And the bars are full already. Somebody's ready for it. The booze was made, the beer was there. Uh, and what happened then is I, what I truly believe, what my collection uh, is, is the celebration of drink. After 1933, people got so creative in, in inventing shakers and jiggers and stirrers and glassware for drink in bars, but really for at home. So here we have what I like to call my, my silver collection. Um, these are all different uh, shakers by different companies, circa 1934 to maybe 1937. Uh, this is Gorham. Uh, I believe this is uh, Reed and Barton, which they look like milk jugs. Uh, all different styles here. Wallace, the big ones. They made these great big 64-ounce shakers because people would have cocktail parties and they could pour the same drink for everybody. So you fill that with Manhattan, then pour it to everybody at the party. And back then, the glass was only three ounces. It wasn't like it is now. People doing these seven, eight, ten-ounce martinis. The cocktail was an aperitif. It was a, a way to start the evening, to get hungry and dine. Then they would sit down and have... Uh, wine with their meals or beer with their meals, then wrap up with uh, cognacs and whiskeys and whatnot. So here is uh, the silver collection. Uh, jiggers, this cool little jigger by Napier. Uh, you got a, a half ounce, ounce, ounce and a half, two ounces. Beautiful silver, tipped in. Uh, spoon, bar spoon slash jigger slash opener. Stirred it, pop open a beer, make a cocktail. Again, uh, they were big drinks, so they had big big jiggers. So you got a four ounce jigger and a two ounce jigger. So you do four ounces of bourbon, two ounces of vermouth, stir it, and um, serve the drink. Here we have, uh, these are cocktail straws. They're silver. You'd stir your drink and sip your drink through the cocktail straw. The sets are big. The books, the books I have uh, a couple of hundred different books. This is Giggle Water, which is a funny name, funny title. Um, I'm trying to see the year here. Uh, I can't, but I'm, I'm, I'm thinking like 1935, 36 has recipes uh, for cocktails of that era. Uh, another one here, just a little, this is given out by. Uh, a liquor distributor that has different cocktails, Ballantine, whatnot, 1940s. We'll step down this way. Uh, another cool jigger. This would sit on top of the glass and fill it and, and pour it in, or would sit on top of the shaker. 
and get the right measurements. Here we go again. Uh, this is some, somewhat like a bar boy, which is a tube, but this one's silver. Uh, you know, half ounce, ounce, ounce and a half, bar opener, and a uh, corkscrew inside. Also used for breaking your ice like we did earlier. Boom, boom, boom. You crack your ice with that. Uh, not really a uh, ice bucket, but made like an ice bucket. But it was a sugar caddy because people loved bar stuff. So that's what that is. We have bitters bottles here. It's from the 1930s. Orange and Angostura, which are the big basic twos. These are the Wallace pitchers. Uh, this is, I think, a Wallace also. Different ones on the Napier Jigger. Looks like a cat. Needs to be polished. Uh, There's another one. I think Reed Barton. Um, you'd have green for the right amount. Yellow for a, a little bit more. Red. That's enough. That's it. So stoplight. Uh, silver overlay was huge. Again, small glass. A cocktail would be served in a glass this size. Silver overlay, glass. Elegant little cocktail. Gets you hungry. More, more uh, stirs. Little hearts on stir. Sip. Uh, then we have, uh, here's another, another Reed Barton uh, milk shaker and two more fingers of whiskey here. Some beautiful overlay on these, these ones here. Down here are, this goes more into the 40s, which was aluminum and Bakelite. These are aluminum and chrome uh, and, and Bakelite is the plastic used on it. Uh, really kind of hit the modern sort of times. Over here are, uh, I think it's Hawk's Crystal. These are crystal shakers that are three-piece. We put our drinks in here, shake it, then open it here to pour. See the little strainer in there? That's it. So we've got about, I don't know, there's three here. There's a couple more around the collection. Um, this one, Manning Bowman. Beautiful. Again, Bakelite. I bought this actually at a uh, Salvation Army for $3. It's worth about 500 So that's kind of cool. Uh, Napier, again, uh, was the king of making great barware. This is a swan, but you would put your pre-garnished uh, uh, olives for a cocktail party, and people would have pick up their olive and put it in their drink. So picture these with olives on top on this beautiful silver plate, um, the olive holder or a garnish holder. Uh, the glassware, again, uh, beautiful stuff to clean it properly. A lot of them came apart. These come apart. Sometimes they come apart. We'll, we'll put it apart now. Uh, dance. Dance, sing, uh, joyous times, piano bars. The conga shaker, 1938, 1940. You would take this out, add your ice, your uh, spirit, whatever mixes you had to. Of course, it's old, so sometimes they stick. All right, we'll put that down and pretend that's in there. And close the top, and then the conga. Dun, 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 dun. And that's how you would mix your drink. So the, the cleverness of people, we can drink again. Yahoo, let's get funky with it. So they added the, 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 um, the joy of, uh, of music, the joy of party to the products. Uh, I could show you, talk about a million things, but I promised a five minute tour. So then we have here, we step into, uh, the colored stuff, okay, so that's the silver, there's some chrome, there's some Bakelite, this is the colors. Uh, glass blowers, Hazel Atlas being one of the largest ones, a lot of these are made by Hazel Atlas. I can't remember the producers of all of them, but you see they're beautiful, they're blue, there's scenes, the dancing um, sailors, so that steps into kind of World War II era. Uh, this one, if you lived by the beach and you loved fish, uh, obviously, uh, hunting with horses, uh, and a million others, and a lot of them have, then we have the barbells. The barbells are cool, I'm going to be very careful here. Again, these are not always the most functional things, but they're so fun to show and play with. And I've used a lot of these shakers, I haven't used the barbells to make a drink, but you'd add your mix, shake it, or shake it like that, and uh, that's a barbell shaker. Boom. Put those back up. And then, um, stirrers, uh, a lot of bars had glass stirrers, which I think are absolutely gorgeous. These are cobalt blue. They have the names of the uh, of the restaurant. This is uh, Bonat Restaurant. I don't know where that is. I have a couple that are a little more famous. Uh, this one is uh, looks like Savoir Savoir Bar. 
There's a lot of different ones and a lot of uh, funky stuff. Uh, and then we had the, this is very complex too, especially in the 40s into early 50s, was the measurements for a particular cocktail. So here we have uh, in Alexander, which uh, we would probably call at the time, it was a brandy alcohol, but it's actually gin based. So it's where to fill. So you need dry gin for two drinks, uh, sorry, four drinks. And again, that's not a lot, of, that's not a big recipe because the drinks are only three, four ounces. Dry gin for six drinks, dry gin for eight drinks, then creme de coco for eight drinks. Creme. So each one's at a different level. So these are kind of funky. There's a lot of, a lot of different styles. Here's another one with different uh, recipes on them. And back, I'll tell you, the 30s, 40s are probably the best because the drinks were three, four ingredients and made life easier and uh, a lot more fun. Um, this is great. This is Napier again, uh, one of my favorites. It has a little dial on top. And you can't see it because it needs to be cleaned properly, but it would say Manhattan, Bacardi cocktail, whatever it was, you put it in and shake the drink. And then, if I get that, I can't get that one open, hold on. Let's try another one. Okay, they're old and stuck. You're going to have to cut that. Anyway, <laughs> we'll show you another piece like that on the other side. Again, we have down here, uh, these are uh, Manning Bowman. These are uh, uh, true treats. They're chrome. They're uh, deco extraordinaire. And I'm going to step over. I'm sorry on the floor because you have no rooms left on the shelf. You can show that. But I guess I put stuff down below. Um, it, it's to the point where I, I really can't fit much more. Uh, if you come this way, Louie, we'll, we'll grab some stuff. So we did, there's a lot of blues. Then we have the rubies. The rubies are extremely collectible. They're beautiful. Back here, I'm going to move this so you can see it a little clearer, is uh, the, the leg. It's a red leg in a silver slipper uh, by, uh, I think it's West Band, a company out of Virginia, 1937. Again, you see the ruby with the silver overlay. We have back here a very tall piece that's called a skyscraper shaker. A lot of these things, like I said again, are not the most functional. How beautiful to sit on a bar at home and have a cocktail party with. We have uh, a Cheerio shaker. Uh, this is 1934, and this is this again is just the epitome of creativity. 1934, prohibition's uh, less than a year, and they come with this shaker, Cheerio original sticker, and on it are drinks. These are recipes, and each card has two sides to it. They come out, you measure up for four people, for eight people, for twelve people, and follow the recipe right here. Uh, again, here we have a, a nice uh, another ruby uh, barbell shaker. Um, this is a beautiful old, this is probably pre-prohibition, hand-blown cocktail shaker with glasses. The bell, the bell is, is a very, very cool piece. This particular one, I'm going to say 1940. But what's cool about the bell is during prohibition, people would have to hide their cocktail shakers, so they had these shakers that look like bells. So what we do is, uh, you mother, another one I can't open. Okay, cut that one out, right? Forget that. And then we have, uh, sorry. Some more ruby here, uh, Brooklyn, 1940s. Uh, this is uh, the uh, Foreman Company. Uh, really beautiful Art Deco, Bakelite. Uh, and on the bottom are recipes, so you could follow the recipes right on the bottom. Uh, and if you look down, you'll see all kinds of small pieces all over the place. This is a, uh, again, opener, jigger, uh, recipe guide, and uh, corkscrews in there, and for crushed ice again. So now we're going into uh, the part of the collection that's the 50s, 60s kitsch stuff. The, the parties you might see on Mad Men or something like that. A lot of this stuff was. This is a Farber. Uh, it's called Bubble Maker. It's chrome and Bakelite. Uh, we have these aluminum. Aluminum was huge. So they're probably 1940s, 50s. And aluminum became super uh, prevalent. This is an ice crutcher. These are uh, salt and pepper shaker that look like cocktail shakers. Okay, and then we have uh, our silly... You know, drunk dude on the lamppost with all the bar tools, his jigger hat. He's got an opener here. Uh, we've got another bell over here. Uh, penguins, silver. Uh, these are uh, little skewers for getting your olives, or even if you had a cocktail party, uh, look like bowling pins. This glass uh, is all about the repeal. So it's uh, eventually, why not, 1933, or 1932, they're talking about repeal ending, and there's always different little comics on it. Up here, with the typical drunk on a, uh, on a lamppost, he works at 
How dry I am, he sings. How uh, wet I feel. Uh, the Drunk on the Lamp Post is sort of iconic. Cocktail recipes. There's another uh, container that looks like a fire extinguisher. So, uh, basically, I think the fire extinguisher represents the next morning, the hangover, I'm mixing up something to put out the fire. Pink elephants, 1950s Hazel Atlas. Pink elephants, we all know, are the, the scene of the drunk. Uh, Pink Edward's Guide to uh, Cocktails. Uh, this is a, a pour top off a bone, and you tilt it to pour. It also plays how dry I am. So you put this on top of a bottle. I'll go here, Hazel Atlas again. These are uh, 50s, 60s home shaker set, kind of, I guess, the picnic mode. Uh, this one looks like a uh, lantern, but it's a shaker. Um, got all kinds of tools down here. Another tool like I showed before, bar boy. We have one of the coolest things that I've ever seen is this. So, uh, I'll quiz you. Know what it is? Okay, I'll tell you what it is. It's called a champagne tap. When I was younger, in the 70s, a lot of uh, champagnes I would see had the metal cap, but there's a little hole in the middle, I never knew why. And this is why, because you would put this into it, drill it down into your bottle of champagne, keep it concealed, and then you could make like a champagne cocktail, like this, because the natural pressure would force it out, so you could make champagne cocktails. And some of the fun things to show, uh, again, dice, stirring a big martini, uh, plastic and Bakelite, that's for mixing your drinks. Uh, I have another champagne tap here. Uh, 50s aluminum stirrer with jigger in it, really lightweight, and then don't don't make a drink. Uh, music and drink were a big theme, so we have to see a lot of shakers that have musical instruments on or songs on them. Uh, just cool stuff. This is actually electronic uh, shaker. It stirs, and you press one button and it stirs up on top of his buttons, and the other, and it pours the drink. And like I said again, I've used a lot of these things. Here's another one, mix and pour. Same thing, 1960s, uh, kitschy home stuff. Can you see that all right? Mix and pour. And it has the buttons, and you would mix it, and then it pours out. So you don't have to. It's a kind of lazy man shaker, I'd like to call it. More music, okay? Little cabaret thing going on there. Uh, another bitters bottle. Beautiful uh, frosted bitter bottle. Uh, drunken, drunken scenes were quite common. Uh, so this is the drunken rooster, the drunken cocktail. So they're here with glasses with that. Up here we've got some beautiful old stirs, and then the old, uh, I, which I think everybody's seen at some point, is the old bartender with the red nose. This one's green because I had the wrong one. And then we have another one over here. Uh, again, the the uh, the bar light, bartender, and uh, the old drunken nose. Uh, some more bar tools, 1960s. This is cool. This is actually electric. It stirs the drink, and this comes out. You lift that up, and then you can take the shaker out, pour it. Um, Asian stuff was real popular. Another plastic 60s set, glass with plastic top. There's recipes on the top of that. Uh, sweet Adeline. This is the uh, you know one of the great uh, sort of drunk songs. Sweet Adeline, and so this is a glass shaker. This is probably, I don't know, 40 something ounces, but you could pour a lot of drinks out of that one. And just clever and cool. If you look down here, you see all kinds of small wares, which is just, I don't know, I got, I got so much stuff. We've got more stuff underneath. Uh, we'll give it a lot, a lot more. Um, then we have another whole shelf over here, which we'll take a walk through real quick. Uh, up on top, we have, uh, they look like hourglasses, but they're actually shakers made by a company called Maxwell. And then we have the bar watch. Uh, everything's five minutes. It says, Lou, can you read that? What's it say on the bottom? Something five after. Sorry. No, 
says, no drinking after five. No drinking after five. Okay, so it's five all the time. No drinking after five, so it's five all the time. Cool. Another Manning Bowman shaker. Some more decanters. These I like to call my politically incorrect pieces, which is uh, the Drunken Indian, which uh, you know we're not allowed to talk about it anymore. The uh, uh, Ambangi stirrers, which sort of like National Geographic esque, dealing with a woman's age. Um, yeah, so many more. The, 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 these were real popular, the uh, stirrers in the 60s, and they have different scenes. It's a golf scene. Uh, a lot of them have whistles on them, so you need another drink, you whistle for it. I think I tried to show you this earlier. Let's see if this one does it. So you'd make the drink, take it apart, and it's got a strainer, in it, and you pour it, and this is your glass. So it's all in one Napier shake for drink. Um, yeah, and then, you know, if I... There's boxes galore underneath. There's um, a lot of uh, bigger pieces. There's ice buckets and whatnot. I have more stuff, more prints upstairs. I've got newspapers uh, from Prohibition Repeal. Uh, I've got a beautiful old frame, framed um, uh, booze ads and whatnot. But there's a lot of stuff to it. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So uh, what I'm going to do is sit down and... Uh, Drink my Manhattan, and uh, we'll talk a little bit more. All right, so so I gave you what I wanted to be my five-minute tour. It's difficult to do five minutes of this stuff. There's actually, to do it properly, it would be a, uh, a three-day tour to talk about each piece, to talk about the history of it. Uh, right here in front of me is uh, our, our uh, one of our greatest presidents, FDR. This statue... Uh, was made in 1934 and he was known as the man of the hour because he helped uh, repeal prohibition which gave us our right to drink back so the celebration to me as many bars are doing this sort of pre-prohibition party uh, my party is post-prohibition we can drink we got creative we had fun uh, things were made that were just so spectacular and his stories I tell everybody that uh, when I'm training bartenders, every bottle has a story, but every bar has a story. And by showing this stuff off, the bar has hundreds, thousands of stories. Stories about the, about the times, story about the pieces, uh, the people. Um, so my goal has been to uh, show off this collection. I've recently been offered uh, a uh, possibility to be in the New York Times to show my collection and what I I love the idea but I don't think it's shown off in a proper fashion here as you see I've got you know up to 10 pieces confined to one box and I'm trying to get together with somebody to have a location where these can be spread out and shown properly and then to bring the New York Times and I've also been approached by CBS Sunday Mornings which has been my favorite news program for 30 years uh, to do a piece on it so uh, I, I'm showing you this collection uh, and hoping to uh, partner with someone, um, and I don't necessarily mean a financial partnership, but a show partnership, which can be shown off uh, in, in, a, uh, in, a, in a fantastic way, and even in a permanent collection kind of way. Uh, I love my stuff. I call them my bar toys, but they're also my muse. They give me ideas and thoughts and, and, and stories to tell people. So this is, um, you know, my favorite man. I, I lit my cigarette with my favorite little lady over there. So, uh, you know, that's kind of my story, and I, and I hope that uh, you'll uh, look at it, consider it. You're invited any time to come over. I've been uh, on a couple of television programs. I've shown my collection to over the last... 10 years, probably close to a thousand people, um, but now it's time for me to show it in a proper fashion, so cheers. Thank you. You know, the one thing I know is that the space that you have is beautiful. The workmanship, the design, and I, and I really just believe that what I have uh, in my collection would just... Uh, complement it. It would be just, it, it would work so well within the design that you have.